So Joey, you make history, you know, we talk about this, and, and I think it's amazing. First off, you know, it's Kale Sanderson, 159-0 and 0 mm -hmm. in, in, for Iowa State, um, four national titles in Division One. You win four national titles in Division Two here, uh, Notre Dame College. You guys win a team title. I took second. No, no, no. You guys did oh, win. Yeah, you, in your four oh, years, yeah, you yeah. won a team title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sir. How unprecedented it is for you, the chance you took. This, this was a program, I think, three years. Yeah. Three or four years before you came in here. How much of a chance was it? Tell me the journey of Anthony Ralph recruiting you. Tell me about that. And, and, and how much was a chance, of a chance was it? It was a big chance. You know, Ralph came to my house when he, when he came to re recruit me and stuff. But wherever I ended up going, to be honest, Coach Zeb, I knew, I felt in my heart that no matter where I went, I was going to be something or i done something to help my team out. I just always wanted to go somewhere with kids like me and who who was who who were willing to work hard and, and were willing to win on the mat. That was the biggest pet because in high school I had some kids on the team who who wouldn't want to win the tournaments. They'd be like, I just want a place. I just I, it used to just frustrate me how you can just say something like that. But I wanted to go somewhere and at Notre Dame College where I felt like well each each guy on my lineup is gonna try to win this tournament or win this match by a lot of points. And you know when I first got recruiting here we had Jeffrey Pelton. We had Eric Berge, we had Orlando Scales, we had, uh, at the time, Jared Brooks, who was doing extremely well in the fight game right now. Uh, Brandon Wright, who went to Grandview, who was a, a two-time NAIA champion. I know I'm naming kids, but these were the kids that were here when I was here and who was sounding like champions at the time. And I just wanted to be a part of the champion talk because I like kids who got their head on their shoulders right, or I should say young adults who had their head on their shoulders right and things like that. So the process for me was coming here was they, they sounded just like me. They want to be they want to be something in life. And I just thought that why I came here was that was another reason why I came here, too. And it just sounded good, you know, them wanting to be something in life. And the way they talk, how they're going to get this on the mat, they're going to do this on the mat, they're going to score this many points on the mat. It all sounded good to me. So I was around kids who sounded just like me. So, yeah. Looking at, you know, you, you, you know, you're going to have to hear this, even the rest of, you know, what you, what you did. Not to downplay accomplishments, but everybody's always the, the D one thing was always there. Oh yeah, the D one thing, and and I know Fr Coach Romano, Frank Romano was my college coach, mm -hmm. your college coach. He was he fought that tooth and nail, and, and that I think that was his biggest fear was, you know, was Joey going to transfer out? <sighs> Stick in here, and 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 you know, there's the fork in the road. You could have done did what like I said, Romero Cotton. He went to Nebraska. Yeah, you could have done that. Yeah. You could have you know he had some issues with the law, but you ultimately come here. You don't get the respect you deserve. Mm -hmm. What's that like? You know, every, the D one thing, and not getting the respect I think you deserve. What's well, that like? It, it was, <laughs> to be honest, it was multiple times I wanted to transfer just because of hearing people talk about it online and stuff like that was it was it was it was extremely frustrating. But to be honest, Kozeb, it it made me the person I am today. By them saying I can't beat this person or this person could take me or they don't think I could beat this person, I'm thinking like how how can he beat me? It 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 would be all. Going through my, I had plenty of talks with my coaches like, man, coach, they think this person can do something with me, or they think this, and and I used to think to myself like, how can he beat me? If he can't take me down, he can't he can't get away from me, and I can get away, you know. But uh, it was an ego problem I was having. I had multiple talks with Bubba Jenkins, who trains out in my uh, gym now, not my gym, my uncle's gym in California. Told me you gotta put the ego down, you know, it'll help you become a better person, and that's why, coach Zeb, I never listened. By the time I got to my Soft, the end of my sophomore year, I didn't listen to no more talks about the D1 talk or this person could be better than you no more because it was like, it's nothing I could do about it. I won all these D1 tournaments and they're still not satisfied. Or I can't say they're still not satisfied, people still not satisfied. So I learned that's going to be critics anywhere and I had to learn it. It was easy to say or people tell me it's going to be critics everywhere, it's going to be critics anywhere. But I really learned that it's going to be critics everywhere just by you doing good. And um yeah, uh, I won the Michigan State Open three different weight classes, you know, 65, 24, 84, and I wasn't even 84 pounder last year, just to prove a point. And I had a one eye, you know, and people still would criticize me about, oh, he still can't do this, he still can't do that, but it, I just had to learn and stay humble and uh, just just keep doing it. It helped me tremendously, you know, it kept me working hard and it kept me, my goal, and that's what made, really wanted to make me win this fourth title. I said, uh, if I can do it undefeated, what else can they say? You know, and um, that was one of my things that I went into this season and finishing strong and, uh, yeah. Not getting the love, not getting the respect. You know, you'll look at, I'm sure you look at Flow Wrestling. I'm sure you look at whatever media oh, yeah. outlet it may be. Yeah. And, you know, there's guys on there that they're featuring, guys mm -hmm. you beat. This guy, that guy, they're writing articles. 
um, you know, all the websites. Looking at all the websites because because we're our media is web based. You know, mm -hmm. there's the, the Big e Ten it's network. The ESPN and wrestling. Yeah, yeah, but like, <laughs> but there's the Big Ten network, which is a little the little niche mm -hmm. of TV, and then everything else is internet. Yes. But not being the featured guy, not being the featured guy. I'm not people not talking about you. I know you're just hungry and you want to win, but yeah. it's got to get to you at some point where you're not the guy, you're not in the spotlight, you're here at Notre Dame College. How do you handle that? Uh, I handle it as everybody just just staying focused, man. I, I don't let it bother me. I can't I can't I can't let the fact that like it's it's been multiple times I thought that you know Flo Wrestling should have put me on a story. I saw Nashawn Garrett's story, one of my great friends and stuff like that, and I'm like, man, why don't do a story for me? I grew up I grew up crazy. You can go to my city and do the same thing, but you know it. All my all my and all my friends, we all watch Flo Wrestling, and it's just one of the things that that's our dream is to be. To tell our story to everybody like that, but I had I thought it was never going to happen, and I don't know if it's still going to happen to me winning this fourth title. But uh, I, I got over it, Zeb. I, I had to put it down, man, and and then I got over the fact that me not being in this because me being in the spotlight, it, it it was never important. I just wanted to be successful in life and and uh, and, and keep God in my keep God on my side, and and, and I I'll be okay, you know. But uh, I I never really got it never bothered me, Zeb. Cause I can't even say. Never bothered me, never being in the spotlight. After my sophomore year, you know, when I was coming into college, I was always want to be, I want to be the headline of flow, I want to be the headline of flow. It didn't happen that year. I, I won in my sophomore year undefeated, and I was like, man, what, what's, what's going to, is anything? It didn't happen. I said, man, I had plenty of talks with my mentors, like I said, and they just said, put the ego down and just keep being successful, and then everything will come to you. If you keep, keep your mouth shut, keep God on your side, and keep doing everything you're supposed to do right in your heart, things will come to you.